Hi guys, I'm going to break down the Ultimate Self-Defense Championship final episode, the seventh episode, because a lot of people have asked me to do, because I am an actual self-defense expert. I have the highest rated self-defense instructional on BJJ Fanatics, 21 five-star reviews, eight five-star reviews to BJJ Fanatics. It's four and a half hours long, quite a deal, and as you can see, there's often awesome sales that you should take advantage of and get. Uh, Wonder Puppy's going a little crazy over there. Anyway, let me show you one minute of my fighting clip so you know I know a little bit about what I'm talking about. That's versus Jeremy Horn, UFC light heavyweight title contender. A couple fights after this. Boxing blast, karate blast. Big Superman punch at the Kudo World Championship. Yes, I'm also a Daito Juko black belt, the Brazilian Jiu Jitsu black belt, a Gene LeBon Goka Shevichian black belt, the Taekwondo black belt. A keto brown belt, even though I make Kodagushi great again. Uh, that's versus Akiyama or Sexy Yama there. I played the wrong video. Let me start here, guys. There's that boxing karate blast. Bear with me. Superman punch. Here's a upside down Russian armor kind of thing. Uh, my third MMA fight. An HB fight, really. No old bard. World's first straight blast in actual MMA against a champion, Pankers champion Yuki Kondo. A couple fights later, fought Tito Ortiz for the light heavyweight UFC strap. Uh, that was the straight blast over chain punch, Bruce's favorite technique. Me using sidekicks back in 1997, sliding sidekick to the leg and chest. Round kicks back when everyone thought you couldn't kick above the belt. Kick punch combo. And now front kick to the chin. Hmm. That was a long time before Anderson Silva and Leota Machido with Steven Seagal's so, help. Anyway, uh, just so you can see in a guillotine for the tap out on this wrestler. Another straight blast at the first Daito Juko Kudo World Championships. Uppercut. Uh, just so you can see a little bit that, yes, I have fighting ability. And, yes, I do know what I'm talking about. Look at my best jujitsu techniques of John Wick breakdown I did with Viking Samurai on my channel or his channel. Um, here's just a couple clips from that, and then we'll get into that, that's how you awesome. should market yourself, man. Get the Dan the Wolfman t shirt, make Kota Geishi's great again. Get my uh instructional, it will really help you out. And now, on to the seventh and last episode of the Ultimate Self Defense Championship. He calls a challenge here, okay? So, anyway, they are gonna do some like one-on-one -on -one micro fights of 20 seconds. I really wish that it would have been 30, uh, like a minute, 30 seconds or a minute. I like one minute micro fights because guys gas and get tired about 35 to 40 seconds in. And that's where the big positional changes will happen and you completely dominate someone. That's how you can be a trained martial arts artist and really overcome guys in street fights if you actually knew how to cover black, which I don't know if anyone's ever done in this entire self-defense championship, the number one block in all of martial arts, a cover blocker, head and elbow spear into it, and stuff that you can learn from my instructional. Carly weapons gloves as well. Just for the sake of your fingers. It's almost like you're wearing 10 ounce boxing gloves, but you can grapple somewhat. With so there's Jeff Phelps explaining doors, what it's going half, to be. Half, you don't know who you're fighting. I'll come in and go. Don't door, know who you're going to fight. You come out of the door you know, and door, fight. You straight in. You 20 seconds to do as much as you can. The reason for this challenge of going all out for 20 seconds is to show that usually in self-defense when fighting at maximum intensity, the fight does not look like a professional fight, but instead even experienced martial artists end up looking like brawlers due to adrenaline and the chaos adrenaline the and cortisol like and tunnel vision brawls don't look like is right here either and under these difficult circumstances we will be seeing who still does the best by causing the most damage to potentially so who end. gets the most Definitely damage in that 20 seconds or dominant set, position this flying towards me yeah. and so rokus versus seth is going to come out of the rooms So Rokas gets hit with a jab. He gets a tight plum clinch, but he doesn't have the space really to land a knee. It should have been a hard right knee instead of a left knee. And then he gets kind of knee tap, bum rushed, bear rushed by Seth, who's 6'235 to 240 pounds. They list him at 235. He scrambles up from the underhook. And now good brawl in there, right? Hard punches from Rokas. He has learned how to turn it on. Now he goes to what I call the stock exchange, left, right, left, right, 
really good that he was willing to throw down. So actually, actually this one, dog's eating shoes, sorry. Actually this one was close. And I think that Rogus did pretty good there because Seth got the takedown, but they did scramble back up to their feet. And so that one could have been possibly even considered a draw, uh, but they gave it to Seth, I think, for, you know, more damage and getting in the top position. And Jeff Phillips bringing a couple huge dudes, and these guys are scared they might be fighting a couple huge dudes, one that had fought Muay Thai and one that had wrestled before. I see Mike throws the world's biggest telegraph overhand right against the guy known that's all he's ever done is uh, reactive double legs. And Jeff Chan, Jeff Chan lands some punches, gets on top. Easy to hurt is like, well, I can do up kicks. And here's a slop guard. That right leg shouldn't be there because, oh, my God. And then he's passed. So let me just stop it right there. He's passed, pounded from side mount. In, in less than 16 seconds, he got his guard passed, taken down, guard passed, and in side mount. That is not a self-defense instructor. That's not a kickboxing instructor. That is no skill. That is a white belt, off and on white belt, that doesn't even have blue belt skills. Because a blue belt doesn't get his guard pass within three seconds. It doesn't, it doesn't happen. Okay, so maybe you should actually have at least a blue belt. You're not even intermediate until you have a purple belt in jiu-jitsu and you fight amateur MMA and win amateur MMA fights. So Rokas is almost there. But Mike isn't even an amateur kickboxer. He can't even win amateur kickboxing matches. He, he loses less than amateur kickboxing matches. Okay? He has no fundamentals. He doesn't know what to do. He's full of kids. He's faked it and makes jokes and then makes excuses like, oh, it was so close. Or, oh, it's okay to be upside down twice on buses. No, it's not. All he's made is excuses, and he has absolutely sucked through this whole thing. And it shows how horrible he is. And yet people buy the BS when he makes like, oh, I was going for an arm bar. It was almost close on a bus. No, you weren't. No, you weren't. Luckily, Ramsey Dewey knows uh, the guy on top is winning, especially when he passed your guard and is in side mount. And had that been a one-minute longer fight, do you think Jeff Chan would have dumb damage, mounted, landed a flurry of punches, taken the back, and rear naked choked him or armbarred him? So, and everyone else is like, well, Mike does so good because he's so undersized because I'm undersized and I'm a peon typing on a keyboard. No, he doesn't do good undersized because... Uh, Jeff Chan is the same size. Okay? He's a little taller, but they're the same weight class. They're both in the 150s. So it's not size, it's skill. It's always skill and technique, as we'll see as this goes on. It's always skill and technique and attributes. Okay? So Jeff gets all three points for beating Easy to Hurt, obviously. And next two guys up. Some big dudes that don't really fight each other. So what we learn here is Jeff Phillips is probably not the easiest uh, person to uh, date in the world, I'm sure, because he likes to play mind games. But it was good because it got the extra little bit of adrenaline and fear and little guys like Mike and stuff. And even Rokas has had problems, fear of anyone big and strong looking like in a second MMA fight. Um, so what you saw was Seth keeps it simple stupid. I've been saying he's been doing good through this whole thing. Rokas has been doing pretty good. He's still a beginner, but he's almost at intermediate level. And when Rokas gets a legitimate purple belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu and wins an amateur MMA fight, he's an intermediate level MMA guy. Which certainly doesn't make you a self-defense expert or a martial arts expert because that's just getting to the mid-level. So these guys aren't even there yet, if you see that. So now they're going to fight on this Iowway. Rokas versus Jeff Chan. 
Rokas has been paying attention. He knows that Jeff spams like crazy, which, you know, if he continued to fight pro MMA instead of just making money on YouTube, you would find out. That's why I say he's very skilled, but he is on a low le lower level MMA. He didn't fight top ranked guys with huge, win long winning records. Okay. And that matters. Uh, people are very easily fooled. They're not critical fooled. They're not critical thinkers nowadays. Um, but he's skilled, but he always goes to the well of a reactive devil, and he always gets hit with left high kicks, and he's heard me relying too much on head movement. Uh, whatever. So, Rokas stops, so there wasn't a reactive double, and then Jeff comes with a one-two, and he kind of a little bit of a hanger arm, left hanger arm by Rokas, and he had a little bit of a pullback on his head, and then a takedown happens because... Let's replay that. Takedown happens from that clinch. So Rokas pulls back from that one, two. And then Jeff gets the underhook and he tees to the side in wrestling. He makes a tee happen, which means he's getting the back and he gets the takedown. Rokas tries unsuccessfully to roll him over with a headlock like an untrained person. And Jeff is in side mount just like he was right away on everybody else and on. Uh, easy to hurt. And then Rokas using his size and strength, 6'3", 180 pounds, or 190 pounds, I think. Yeah, more like 190 pounds, if not bigger. I think he's listed at 187, but really he's probably like 193. He uh, was able to get an underhook and get up and scramble the feet. So Rokas did like okay again, but Jeff wins the fight, right? But he did make a scramble happen, and he has been turning on the switch better. Uh, like Clinton was able to turn on the switch, but then sometimes had mental problems uh, giving up. Um, Rokas has learned how to better turn on the switch, something that Ramsey has never been able to do because he thinks self-defense is fantasy because he lives in Shanghai, China. And if people just get killed and backed up over them, that way they can't sue you for money, so you purposely kill people in Shanghai, China. That's just what you deal with. There's no self-defense. Um, or if you're robbed, you just give over stuff. But nowadays, if you're robbed in America, they'll just shoot you or stab you. Anyway, compliance doesn't work like it did 20 years ago, 30 years ago, uh, nearly at the same percentage. Okay. Frenemies, friend versus friend, north versus south. Sensei Seth squaring off with AC Troll. Says so six foot two thirty five. I think all these guys were under like five pounds from what they really weighed in. If they, they just kind of said it, <laughs> and they all made themselves sound better. So it says like six foot two forty. I think two thirty five to two forty. Mike does land a good kick to the nuts here. Uh, looks like Seth had inside position, though. Mike's always dropping his head, doesn't have inside position. There's no grappling fundamentals, no striking fundamentals, no fundamentals at all. Uh, pulled left high kick, he manages to catch the kick and get a takedown. He gives his back up because, just like we've seen in every other match, he has no jujitsu. He gives up back, he gives up side control. He gives up flopping to his back on a bus, putting his head low. He can get stomped and stabbed. And as a security professional that worked at a meth-induced uh, bus depot and dealt with stuff, you don't want to be upside down with your head, though, on a bus. So, what we're seeing through this whole thing is Ramsey did very bad. And if you look at the scoreboard, Ramsey always did poorly. Clinton would do good sometimes and poorly others, so there seems to be a mental case with Clinton. Seems like a very cool guy. I mean, I'd like to talk to him, and he has made some good um, self-defense videos before and stuff. Clinton seems like he'd be a good guy, but, you know, hasn't done great because he's not consistent mentally, I think. Uh, AC Mike has no skills, barely at all. Like, I throw a big overhand telegraph right. Wow, and one right wide hook. That's all he's done in this whole thing, and two right up kicks. A couple of knees. He's done a couple good knees. But he, but no grappling ability, no real kickboxing ability, no real skill. He should have called himself an instructor. It's really pathetic that he's fooled everybody. Um, and if you see that on the leaderboard there, so let's look at the um, let's look at the board here because this last time you see it, Roka should have edited to see the board at the end of it one more time. That's the one thing he messed up on. Um, because let's look at it here. Ramsey he got had a hurt knee, so he didn't participate this time. Uh, they said Matt had personal issues. I don't know what that means. Maybe he just had to work, or maybe he was, you know, I don't know what that means, but it made him look bad. <laughs> um, 
Ramsey did bad, Matt did bad, Mike did bad, really, really bad. Those three performed horribly through this whole thing. Um, and so size, the size matter. Well, Ramsey's six one two oh five. He was up to like two thirty five uh just before this, before he got COVID. So, you know, Ramsey and Seth were the biggest guys and Ramsey does the worst. Uh, Mike and Matt do really bad. So here it's about skill, technique, and aggression and tactics. Uh, these guys don't have good self-defense tactics. So boom, those three did bad. Rokas has done enough traveling and training with different people where he's focused on self-defense. And he is 6'3", and that does help. But... He's got no technical ability where he's trained enough MMA where he's lost two M amateur MMA fights and he's got a blue belt in jiu-jitsu. And now I've seen him enough that now I'm like, okay, now he's legit blue belt. When at first I see him even in a second MMA fight, I'm like, that's not very legit. He paid for a six-month program. Um, if he trains religiously and gets up to purple belt and wins one amateur MMA fight, then I'll say Rogus has now crossed from the beginner level to an intermediate level. Uh, but these guys with channels act like they're actual experts. They haven't faced multiple opponents. They haven't f faced professional fighters like I have. They haven't faced weapons, uh, etc. Like, they're not masters. Jeff, obviously the most skilled guy. And Seth throughout the whole thing has done well by keeping it within his ability and his bubble butt. He has big, strong hips. He trained for football his whole life, and he's been doing sumo competitions. He has strong hips, strong legs. A big guy, six foot two, thirty-five, two forty, so the highest weight in the competition, and that helps. But he's kept it simple to a couple punches, a hip throw. Uh, in Uchimata and like trying to get on top or forward pressure. Forward pressure is also very important. So false start, these guys hit each other. It's kind of funny. Um, something should have been explained a little bit better. They pulled the hoods. But this does actually show a good thing because it's a self-defense championship. It shows that Rokas knows now how to turn the light switch on when he's not intimidated by someone's size at least. So mentally he can be his own worst opponent and he should start having better faith. And uh, he's been really horrible to me and said some horrible things. Um, but his skills are getting, you know, a little bit better. So forward pressure Mike with the flying knee now. Forward pressure Mike gets on top. Rokas is on bottom. Climbs to a diamond position, a pre-triangle position. And he's landing at least those, like, hammer fist punches. So he's actually winning the fight from bottom, which you can can do. You always want to be on top. And now a sloppy-ish armbar is hard with shin pads on. But an armbar wins in less than 20 seconds. So how could you be an instructor if you get an armbar from guard in 20 seconds? I'm a Brazilian Jesus a black belt. One of the easiest submissions to defend against is an armbar from guard. If you're in top position, you have gravity on your side. All you have to do is stack in or hide the arm and hide in the arm pit or put your knee on his face or step on his throat. You know, <laughs> pick him up and slam him once you got the arm defended. Uh, or just wait your time and pull it out, rip it to the ceiling, and punch the guy in the face. The armbar from guard is the easiest thing to defend against. So you can't be a self-defense instructor if you're getting armbarred from guard and getting your guard pass in three seconds, four seconds, getting armbarred in under 20 seconds. Mike is a fake piece of shit. Okay? That was it for Easy to hurt. Rokas did good, and what, uh, what this shows you and is going to continue to show you is, hmm, a blue belt, at least in jiu-jitsu, does beat people that are not a blue belt in jiu-jitsu, which is something we know from, like, low-level MMA, like, places like India and Pakistan and stuff around the world, and, like, when one was first going on in Southeast Asia, oh, yeah, a blue belt beats a guy that's not ranked in jiu-jitsu. That's pretty much how it goes. Fourth place and, and if you want to be an intermediate level or an instructor, and even if you're a karate instructor out there, you need to at least get like a purple belt in jiu-jitsu or a black belt in judo. And I first interview I did with Rokas four or five years ago, how to make a keto better, I said, Rokas, you seem to like, get at least a blue belt, but I think you should get a purple belt in jiu-jitsu. Get a black belt in judo, because the only people that back in the day that made a keto really work were already black belts in judo. <laughs> Mike, the reality show actor there. Oh, it hurts how bad I did. Mike ends up with fourth place, but the three of the guys did pretty decent in this, and three did poorly. So now the finals, I think this is, is this Seth and Jeff Chan. Seth on the right. Since they Seth on the right, bubble butt. 
Mobile Butt Seth on the right versus the one of the smallest competitors on this, Jeff Chan. And all the people on the keyboard warriors are like, oh, it's because of size and it's because of this. Size is very easy. Size matters. Strength matters. But it's very easy to trump with technique and skills and attributes. Okay? So Jeff's only listed at like 152 pounds. And Seth is lifted, listed at 235 pounds, 152 versus 235. That is a huge disparity in weight classes. I think Jeff fought at 135. Seth would fight at 205 if he went on a diet and trained properly. Okay, so a light heavyweight versus a bantamweight. 135 pounder in MMA versus a 205 pounder. Or 152 to maybe 157 walk around weight versus 235 to 240. That's a huge disparity. And it's only a 20 second micro fight. They should have been one minute. I like one minute better because it shows you a whole lot more how bad things are when you lose uh, and someone gets dominant top position. Right? Seth charges in with forward pressure. He's learned to keep it simple, stupid. Forward pressure. That's good. Using the hips. Drive, drive, drive. Football drive. And look at that right arm around the head. Boom! Armbar transition the right way. It wasn't like the no angle way. So. Both arm bars worked, but we see a brown belt's arm bar versus a blue belt's arm bar in Rokus. Rokus threw the right leg over with the shin facing the face. It used to be known as a Japanese arm bar. You see that a lot in pro wrestling. I've done some three pro wrestling matches. You kind of make it look good for a minute and then turn it into other stuff. This, he got it on the way down. Perfect transition as the right arm was around the head. As he was falling, he kicks the left leg over the face, pivots his right head towards the leg, makes a 90-degree angle, 90-degree angle, and sets up a technical armbar. We only got seven seconds left of a 20 seconds. So he drove in for 13 seconds, and he's falling down over the chair now. Only 13 seconds have transpired. We've got seven seconds left of this mic fight. Like, like and boom, sweeps him over, gets the cross armbar, top cross armbar, ankles crossed. And Seth taps out just before time runs out, or he would have his elbow broken. So all the people out there, oh my god, size matters. Yes, it matters to an extent when you're both very low level. But if you just jump up a, a rank in jiu-jitsu, a blue belt versus a white belt, or here a brown belt and professional MMA fighter with speed and attributes, but only 152 pounds versus 235 pounds, it should tell you all to get in the gym and don't be a fake person like Mike with no skill and a white belt, a black belt or whatever, and cook suwan in four years as a cop before you wreck police cars doesn't make you a self-defense expert and you're not a kickboxing instructor because everyone you've acted like you coach does better than you and you're doing incorrect things technically, always poorly, poorly, poorly technically. These guys don't even cover. They didn't even do good against a shove and punch. No one actually cover block or cover block wrap to an overhook under hook position. They don't have the self-defense skills. So what we see is that Ramsey Clinton, even though he did okay at times, Ramsey Clinton and Mike, did poorly overall. They weren't consistent, and they did poorly overall. Mike never had positions. He always got out position, always flopped to his back. Ramsey mostly did the same thing, um, which questions Brown Belt and stuff, and then later he hurt his knee, and he's got all these excuses, and he did have COVID before. But quite frankly, he doesn't have the mental switch to turn it on. All he's ever been good at is like, you know, a couple, like a front kick and getting a plumb clinch and throwing knees because he's a tall guy. Um... They did very badly, very, very, very badly. And Jeff did very good for his size, and it shows you that technique and attributes, technique and attributes trump all. He just trumped 235 to 40 pounder in reality, Seth's mobile butt at 152, maybe to 157 pounds. Okay. So, because they probably got, even if they did actually weigh in, I, I don't think they did, but even if they did, they were dehydrated from the flight, uh, et cetera. So, Seth did good. No, let's start with Jeff. Jeff did good by being the most technical. He made, he made very poor tactical decisions against weapons because he has no idea what to do, so he would double leg as he got stabbed in the back twice. So, look at the, the knife video I did before this on episode six. It's very important. 
Very important stuff. Seth did good throughout the thing. I'm like, well, Seth's doing good by keeping it simple stupid. Seth honestly has attributes and understands forward pressure. And I'm kind of liking the guy. He's funny. But he has strong hips. And if he lost some weight and got in better cardio shape and dedicated to judo, sambo, and sumo, just grappling arts, keep your little sideways stance, long kicks, and just relying on just a one-two, he could be halfway okay. If he dedicated, dedicated to judo and sumo or sambo and judo and sumo, those three are particularly good. For what I see, he he has an attribute called sensitivity. Seth, I'm going to give you a prop here. Seth actually has an attribute that these others are lacking called sensitivity. So if he learned when to properly pop, pop his hips in and make tighter space and be more technical with stuff, he could actually be some decent, you know? And it looks like he'd be good at sumo. I would have a hard trouble versus sumo because I haven't trained in sumo. I went against a sumo champ in Japan once, a couple of funny videos, Ryzen, Ryu versus... But anyway, they're going to try to crowdfund and get a second one. Congratulations, Rokas, for getting this going. He's already announced people he thinks is going to be in the second one. Again, I question why don't we have actual self-defense experts instead of just, you know, YouTube popularity, high school contest bullshit, even though you're in your 30s. And this should be more about what keeps people safe and what techniques actually work. And if you want to learn to defend yourself, get my BJJ Fanatics instructional. It's often on sale, and yet it's four and a half hours long. I didn't just film for an hour like other instructors. I busted my butt for two days straight when I didn't have to. You make the same money anyway. I did it to help keep good people safe and keep their family safe and the people around them. Let's watch, if you're going to stay with me, just two and a half more minutes of me sparring versus top guys. Versus top guys. Here's versus Akiyama. So we already saw a boxing blast versus Jeremy Horn and a straight blast versus Yuki Kondo and a Superman punch at the Daidojuku Kuru World Championships. I fought in the first one in 2001 and the third one in 2009. Straight blast versus Yuki Kondo. And now let's watch me just versus UFC fighters. So that was Jeremy Horn, Yuki Kondo. Here's Akiyama, Sexy Yama. You saw him in the, what was that, 100, that cool reality show on Netflix, Korean reality show with the athletes. Um, and this was him preparing for his UFC fight versus uh, Sadala, I think, or it ended up being Sadala. Anyway, um, I purposely missed the sidekick of the knee. I purposely missed the spinning back fist because I'm not hurting guys. I was a good sparring partner. I didn't hurt these top pros. And yet Rokas is giving people excuse that I would... I would injure people, even though I've done live fire exercises at squat school with people crossing each other and been a sparring partner to pros in, in the week before their fights, where an injury would make them lose all their money for their families. So I know how to give the right amount of pressure and do things for real and maybe hurt people a little bit, but not injure them. This is Rish Korean Zombie. And I'm just doing this to kind of wrap up the series. Because a lot of people are like, oh, you're old guy. These guys would beat your ass. No, they wouldn't beat my ass. None of those guys would beat my ass. Uh, here's his top UFC. I'm 40 years old here. So already long diagnosed with lupus, suffering from lupus. 40 years old here, sparring top UFC light heavyweight Da Un Young, who's been on a tear, knocks people out with his right hand. Very good distance control, but my offer them blitz attacks, shifting attacks that I hope a guy like Jeff Chan one day would break down or Mighty Mouse because they can actually understand what I'm doing. I've got short little T Rex arms, 72 inches, and I was always sparring bigger, heavier guys, giants, and their size never mattered. Tank Abbott, Dao Un Young, all these big giants. Tim Sylvia, 6'8, 300 pounds. The only guy whose strength, power gave me problems, huge problems, was world champion Greco-Roman wrestler, yoked to the death, kicked out of wrestling, Amir Ali Akbari. Otherwise, you have to make it up with what you're giving. And I can be awkward, and I can be off rhythm, even though I got short arms. Another giant at Korean top team at 40 years old. There's only a minute left here, guys, so let me wrap up my thoughts. Tricky shifting combos, fake overhand to dip high kick. And then he nails me with knees, and I, oh, that killed my ribs, and I wasn't healing up, and that messed me up for a long time. And here I'm blitz striking, karate blitzing, off rhythm attacks, special attacks, shifting attacks. Looks funny, but I hit and I don't get hit. And this is a rare guy who fought in the UFC, Anza, fought in Pancrase forever, a lot of fights.
uh, he reversed Yushin Okami. That dip high kick worked right on him here. The counter right hand. And then he got knocked out. He got knocked out with that one, actually. I think by Munoz. Um, maybe not. But got same thing happened in a UFC fight, which is funny. Um, more versus Okami here on the left. And so, yeah, I've gone with top guys. And no, a white belt and horrible fake kickboxing instructor like Mike, even if he was bigger than me, wouldn't give me problems at all. And I'm old now with a busted knee and a broken foot. But I still work in armed security. And I protect kids and good people. And anyway, guys, get my combat as a street jiu-jitsu instructor. It really will help you off no matter what level you're at. Read their reviews from top level, from cops, from ranked in jiu-jitsu, from, I mean, from low to mid to high level. Look at their reviews. I made it for everyone. You're going to pick up a lot. And uh, stay safe, everyone. Uh, it's too bad that Rokas turned into such an enemy. Uh, you know, would have been nice if he invited me or at least someone like I've suggested, like a top guy who's respected in any style, Kali, even in, even Krat Maga, but there's a couple good guys out there, like someone that focuses on self-defense maybe should be in a self-defense championship instead of Shaolin Monk guy he just announced, Ranton, Jesse Enkamp. Now, if it was Oliver Enkamp, MMA fighter, Bellator fighter, then I'd care. A guy with actual good fighting ability. Look at my breakdown of Jesse. Sorry, he doesn't have it. Look at my breakdown of Rokas in a second MMA fight. He certainly didn't have it. Um, a basketball player. What the hell does that have to do with the self-defense championship? Other than if he's a pro, maybe he's a good athlete. But football players and rugby players are definitely more uh, hard to deal with. Anyway, guys, please thumbs up, share, subscribe. I'll catch you on the flip side. Let me know what you think of the comments down below. Was I fair that three did pretty good? Three did really bad. I think I've been fair in the breakdowns. And uh, why aren't real self-defense people invited to a self-defense championship? People that actually focus on self-defense, that have been in street fights before, unlike Ramsey, who's never been, that have bounced or worked security, uh, et cetera. So please stop getting fooled by these guys, especially when, yeah, they're in the same marketing companies and that's why they get in 